one of these to fit. We're going to put our rail on first. We're going to put the rail on first. Right, I'll move you over to the, um, <clears throat> the window. The window is just there. You can, if it's actually fancy, um, bed a rail with some uh, JB Weld or you know just something to pad out the difference between there and there. But I'm not going to bother. So the rail goes on. It only goes on one way. At least I think it only goes on one way. Should we try it the other way? No, the rail goes on both ways, but like I said, I think this cut out here is to aid ejection. So we'll find ourselves an Allen key that fits. They're actually, I don't know whether I'll be able to get a camera to focus on this, Torx. Which might not be too bad. There we go. One that fits. As always, I know I say this every time. Don't tighten any of them up to start with. In case you come across one like that. which as you might be able to see is chugged up which is quite amusing when you look at the box label and it says QC checked it doesn't look like QC checked to me but we'll have to give it a spray with some WD-40 and have a poke around in there with something that isn't going to damage the threads as if we can clean it up thankfully these appear to be blind holes There's actually um, machined bits of machined metal that were left behind in there. And that one is a blind hole. Can't really tell what those two unless I take the bolt out. bolt out. Those two are blind holes too. I think that one actually might not be. There is quite a bit of crap in there. I wonder if one of these screws is shorter than the others. Is not. Well, let's get some light down. That hole just doesn't seem to have been drilled properly. End of. 
I'm going to give it a blast with some WD-40. <clears throat> So that one feels alright. Definitely just seems to be this front one. Well. to put too fine a point on it. That's a big fuck you to whoever inspected it, isn't it? It's now stuck in a situation where I can't really use the rifle until it's gone back to the shop, which is a 35 mile drive. I can't really, now I'm stuck in a situation where I can't really use the rifle until I've gone back to the shop to hand it back to them, to have it sent back to Redford Brothers, which is the importers, to have them replace it with one that's actually being quality checked and then wait for them to check it and bring it back to me or deliver it back to the shop for which I've got to go and pick it up again which is about an 80 mile round trip thereabouts So all is not lost. Um, I've got background in engineering and over time you learn a few tricks. Now what seems to have happened here is there's, there's uh, four holes. This one is a straight hole. The two at the back are straight holes, i.e. Uh, where's my little stick gone? Here's my little stick. Um, i.e. the hole goes all the way through. Yeah, if I was to put my finger in there, you can probably see, maybe, that this is a straight hole. So I can move that around from underneath because it goes right through. But this one, when you look inside, right, the chamber starts where this stick finishes. So this is what we call a blind hole, as in you can't see right through it. I suppose that's why it's called a blind hole. Um, well what's basically happened is when the blind hole has been drilled and then tapped, whoever was cleaning the gun up at the end of the, the manufacturing process didn't actually clean this hole out particularly well. So <clears throat> this isn't something you should try doing unless you've got experience at it. Like I say, I've got an engineering background. So what you do is add some lubrication and some pressure you take one of the bolts one of your bolts and you gently bently very gently screw it in until it binds up now I've been doing this you'd be obviously you can't see this I'll put it down on the floor you might be able to see it a bit better right you're now sitting on the windowsill I really can't zoom any more than that because I don't actually know whether you can see what I'm doing but what you do is you push it in until you screw it in until it binds then just a little tiny bit at a time in and out in and out and you'll feel the screw well you can see the screw going further down 
And I must stress once again, don't try this unless you know what you're doing. It is very easy, very easy to snap screws off in blind holes, very easy. So that seems to have freed that. It's damaged the edge of the end of the screw a tiny bit, but we can rectify that by very carefully putting this screw into one of the original holes and that will recut the thread or twist the thread back to where it needs to go. And like I say, I'll say it again, just for the really stupid people that would think, oh yeah, just put it in a battery drill and screw it down. You have to do this by hand and you have to do this very, very carefully. You can't let it go tight. When you twist, you just want to twist with the lightest amount of pressure. But now we're back on track. Right, what you might actually be able to see is this hole is dark, where the gun has been treated and blued um, with that open. This hole is chrome and shiny, where I've basically just, the, the, the chroming or the, uh, the bluing was part of the problem in there. Now I've just driven that screw down in there and back out, it's actually pure metal. So if this is carbon steel, that'll actually go rusty over time. So I'll need to keep an eye on this you know, put a drop of oil in there before I put the, the scope mount on to keep it well corrosion free, hopefully, one would hope. So I'll zoom this back out. I'll put it back down on the floor. Oh no. Zoom this back out so that you can see the whole um, process of putting this uh, this rail on to mount the scope on. Back to where we were half an hour ago. Given what I'm using to tighten this up with, which is basically a, a 3 8 drive socket, I'm not going to use a ratchet on the end of it. I'm going to do it with my fingers, so that they are quite literally only finger tight. But, because of the width, obviously I can get a little more torque on it. And do them up nice and tight. Seems to be on there pretty solid. So now we can get on with fitting the scope. 